Hi, it's Mr. Anderson, and this is Obtain, Evaluate, and Communicate Information, Level 3, Integrate Information. You can see in the box that we have quite a few sources, so let me get that source material out of the way. And so when you're integrating information, what you're doing is taking a number of different sources of information, and then you're kind of bringing those together and making sure that we communicate information that's credible. But it should always be aligned to some kind of a phenomena. So your information, first thing you should always do is define the phenomena that you're trying to better understand. And then what you'll do with the information is you will start by obtaining the information, so gathering the information. The next thing you'll do is you'll evaluate the information, and then finally you're going to communicate the information. Now how do we evaluate that information? Information, you're going to do it in three ways. You're going to be looking for credibility, you're going to be looking for accuracy, and then the last thing you're going to look for is bias. And so that's how we evaluate. So after watching this video, you should be able to do this with information like snowfall amounts reported by both the government and also ski resorts, or looking at uh, information on a viral video. But I'm going to start by showing you how to integrate information around Taylor Swift, and then you'll have a chance to do the same thing about inner spring mattresses. So let me clean this up and then we'll get started. Okay, so you can see that I have three sources. The first thing I want to do as we look at these is I want to identify what's the phenomena. And then the next thing I want to do is I want to write down what are the sources. So we'll call this source one, source two, and source three. So let me write down all the sources. Okay, so the sources that I have, the first source I have is Taylor Swift. It's a book written by Wendy Logia, and Logia I printed out her LinkedIn profile. So she is executive editor, editor at Penguin Random House. So that's my first source that I'll look through. The next one is Wikipedia. Wikipedia will have information in it, but also there's going to be citations, and so I'm just choosing it from here. So you can see the numbers. If you click on those, then it brings you to source material. So one was this Parade article by Walter Scott. And then the next one is a Taylor Swift interview by Mark Sutherland. So you can see I'm marking those as 2A and 2B. And then the last is Us Weekly. And then when I looked at this source material, there is no author. So I don't know who may or may not have written this. And so the first thing you do is make sure that you have your, you've cited your source material. And then the next thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to go through and I'm just going to obtain a little bit of information from each of the sources. And I'll just list those down here. Okay, so the information that I've gathered here, and then I'm citing it on the side. So the first bit of information is that Taylor Swift was born on December 13th, 1989 in West Reading. That comes from both this book, Taylor Swift, and also becomes comes from this article, I guess it would be 2A from The Telegraph. Uh, I think I might have that backwards, so that would be 2B. And this would be 2A. Uh, and then the next one, when Taylor has a goal, nothing stops her. That comes from this book on Taylor Swift. And then the next one, which comes from the other article, is that Taylor Swift was named after singer-songwriter James Taylor. And then the last one is about this. I don't know if this will date very well in this, but apparently uh, she's been dating Travis Kelsey, a football player. And according to the source in here, if he asks her, 
proposes to her, of course, she will say yes. And so that comes from Us Weekly. So here's my sources. And so now the next thing I want to do is I want to integrate that information. So I'm going to move information that I would be comfortable communicating to other people from here to here. But to make it over to the communication side, I really have to go through this checklist. I have to think about the source. Is it credible? In other words, is it reliable or trustworthy? Is it accurate? Is it correct? Um, as far as information goes. And then I want to uh, eliminate bias. I want the viewpoint to be subjective, so not slanted or prejudiced in any way. So if we start with the first one, let's look at this. Taylor Swift, she was born at this date. Um, is it credible? Well, it's coming from this. So it's a published book. Uh, we have an author who is really a editor. And so that would be lend to their credibility and accuracy. I mean, there is a slight bias because they're writing a uh, book on Taylor Swift, but I don't know why changing the date or where they're born would help them sell this book in any way. So I would be willing to move this over to communicate information. If we look at the next one, when Taylor has goals, nothing stops her. Well, that's an interesting thing. I think the source would be credible, um, but I don't know how accurate that's going to be. So it's just based on a story that they're trying to tell. And so I don't know if nothing will stop her. I think this is kind of an opinion. And so I don't think I would be willing to move that into the communicate. If we look at the next one, Taylor Swift is named after singer songwriter James Taylor. If we look at that, well, where does that come from? We'd have to look at these other sources. So it's in Wikipedia, which is going to have like people looking over it. Um, but also there's different citations. So if we look at those citations, um, James Taylor, the singer-songwriter, is actually interviewed and said he thinks that's interesting. Um, and then we have an interview with Taylor Swift herself. And so I think these are going to be more credible. And so I'm going to move this over into communicate. And that leads us to this last one. So this is a lead story about Taylor Swift. And the title is They're Going the Distance. And so right away I'm thinking, well, it's kind of biased if they want you to read the magazine, they want you to make sure, like at least to think that they're going to be a couple. And so I wouldn't be willing to move this over to here. I think there's probably credible as a source, but it looks like it's not really about, it's more of a fashion magazine or a pop culture magazine. And also since they didn't list a uh, author, that makes me wonder about who this source is. And so I wouldn't be willing to move that from the obtain information to the communicate information. So if I were to look at how I'm going to communicate, what I would say at the end is I'd be comfortable communicating the following. So I'd use my sources of both this book and also these two articles. I would dump this U.S. Weekly quote. And I would say Taylor Swift was born on December 13th, 1989 in West Reading, Pennsylvania. She's named after singer-songwriter James Taylor. And so what am I doing now? I'm integrating that information and then sharing that information. What's the most important thing you want to do as you go through that is never communicate information that you haven't gone through this checklist. Think about the credibility of the source. Have they been accurate in the past and did they have any kind of a bias? And so what I'm going to do is clean this up and then you'll have a chance to do the same thing with a different topic. Okay, for the next one, I'm going to give you two sources. I'll link these down below. Um, the first source is from Consumer Reports. It has some reviews on inner spring mattresses. And then I just googled best inner spring mattress and that brought up a very similar consumer rating where they talked about their best uh, inner spring mattresses. So let me write down the phenomena. So what I'm going to do is obtain, evaluate, and communicate information on the best inner spring mattress. Um, what I would encourage you to do is do the same. Pause the video, go look at the sources linked down below, and then you try to do it. Then unpause the video, come back and see how our thinking compares. Okay, so the first thing, if we start with, let's just start with consumer rating. So the two top mattresses are the Sattva and the Dream Cloud. And then there's a link to those two reviews of both the Sattva Classic Mattress and the Dream Cloud Mattress. So what I'm going to do is just obtain some information from each of these that I think would be relevant.
Okay, so from the first source, the consumer rating, I've got my two mattresses, both the Sattva and the Dream Cloud. The Sattva is more expensive at $16.95, but has a higher rating. And so I'm just listing all the information that's here. And then the next thing I want to do is I want to uh, look at the second source. Okay, so now I've got four mattresses. So I've got the Sattva, the Dream Clad, we've got the Avocado, and then the Denver's Doctor's Choice. And so the next thing I want to do, and I probably should have done this at the beginning, is I want to include the sources that I'm using, the source material. So let me write that over here. Okay, so now that I've got my sources, what I want to do is I want to move all this information that I've obtained into the communicate column. So I could say like, this is what I would recommend as far as a mattress goes. So the problem with that is I want to really look at the source. And so if I were to just do this without looking at the source and I were to buy a mattress, I probably would rank it like this. I probably would rank it in that order. I don't know, something like that. I would probably get the Dream Cloud because it's cheap, even though its rating is almost as high as this. But the ratings of these are way higher than this one. So if I didn't really look at the source, I might rank it in that order from this is the one I would recommend. This would be my top four. But what you really want to do before you do that is you want to evaluate the sources before you communicate that. And so how do we do that? We're really looking at three things. And so let's look at the consumer ratings for a second. So the first thing you want to look at is you want to look at the credibility of the source. And so is this a trustworthy source? Is this a reliable source? Well, when I was Googling best mattress, sometimes consumer rating came up and sometimes it didn't. Um, one thing that was a little problematic about it is at the top of the website, there's something that says an advertising disclosure. So that got me interested. And then when I looked at that, what I found is that it said this statement here, consumer ratings data-driven, free online resource. We, re we may receive compensation for, from the companies listed. So it seems like these companies that are paying to be in the review are paying consumer ratings. And then it said, Ch -ch -ch. Um, so the compensation, which combined with our research et editorial integrity, determines the location and the order in which they appear. So what they're saying is, if you pay us, we will actually rate yours higher. So it'll occur higher in the rating. And so when I was able to click on this, then it led me right to an ad where I could buy it. And so as I look at these, I would say this is coming from a not a super trustworthy resource. The data on what it is, the price might be accurate, but I don't think the review might be accurate. And they have a huge bias. They're going to give a higher rating to the companies that give them higher money. And so they have a sure bias when it comes to that. So I would rate these lower. I wouldn't trust really the values coming from there. If we look at Consumer Reports, Consumer Reports has been around for decades. If you're not familiar with it, in the front of it, there's a bunch of people who donate because they don't have advertisements in it. They don't take advertisements because they think that will make them bias. And so I'd say these are going to have better values, at least more trustworthy values on Consumer Reports. Um, there's also a little section at the beginning where they talk about why you should trust our results. So, for example, in our lab testing, we included 300 pound roller on each mattress 30,000 times to simulate the use and that we interviewed so many people to come up with that rating. So this tells a, a little bit more about how the ratings were decided and then how they use surveys of how we tested it and then satisfaction from a number of different people. And so as I look at this, this seems to be more credible as a source 
and we don't know much about the accuracy of the prices. I couldn't really check it, but there's less bias here because they're not incentivized to get you to buy. And so if I were to put these now in order, man, I sure wouldn't include these really high because I don't know if they're good or not. Um, I would probably buy the, doc the Denver mattress because it's like less than half the price and it has a really high score. What's interesting, and you look at the consumer reports, they rated this Sadfa really one of their lowest mattresses that you have. And so what are you doing when you're really integrating information? You're taking information from multiple sources, but you're running it through this evaluation phase where you're looking for the credibility, the accuracy, and then the possible bias. And so I've done this with Taylor Swift. Now we've done it together with the mattress. I'll include a link so you could look at snowfall amounts that are reported by both the government observing that and also different resorts or you could look at experts trying to explain this viral video but that's how you integrate information the most important step is evaluating anybody can obtain information but you want to commu communicate information that's trustworthy and i hope that's helpful